I'm going to show you two ways of measuring, right? Um, you can measure with a tape measure. You can measure with a tape measure, right? So let me borrow your hand real quick. So from the PIP, so we're gonna do it for the index finger, okay? We'll just, okay, whichever one. We'll do it for the, so we're gonna do it for the index finger. Let's make it right from the PIP, just so it's extra, a little bit long. We're gonna make it um, two inches and a quarter, right? Two inches and a quarter. So we're gonna make it two inches and a quarter. is how long we want it, all right? So from the top to the bottom, oh, sorry. So top, bottom, all right, top, bottom, right? I'll just draw that line, top, bottom. Um, and then we can measure, um, the size of the finger. So it's two, um, what's my call it? Two, two inches, two inches, right? And a quarter. So let's say we're gonna, I'm gonna try to get this right in the middle of this T, right? So this is, um, the length, right? This is the length. Now, what I need to know is this um, measurement right here from the crease. So this is the PIP, PIP crease, right? To the MP crease. The PIP crease to the MP crease is a less than one inch. So let's say less than one inch. So it's about right here. So this is, this is your T. I don't think I've ever done it so specifically. <laughs> I love it, I think it's great. So this is a PIP crease to MP crease, right? So the thickness, thickness of the ring, right? Thickness of the ring. And then you just essentially go out how thick you want the base. So let's say the base is about the same thickness so we get the base of the trigger finger or thesis someone told me stop using a splint and use the word orthosis well you know what i could say about that <laughs> but i won't <laughs> so um get these random emails that's okay so <laughs> so we're just going to cut them nice and round so yeah yeah i do so i'm just i'm just drawing it straight so everyone can see the pattern right so from the top of the pip to uh, below the distal palmar crease, right? To the bottom. So like halfway down the hand almost, right? And then across where the rings, or the ring goes around the finger. And then the thickness of that around the finger is from the PIP to MP crease, right? So here's where you can change things, right? So if I'm looking for comfort, I might make this a little bulbous. So it's still gotta be skinny on the top, but a little bulbous on the bottom, right? 
So that's that's all. And then for the index finger, we're just gonna um, we're just gonna make it bulbous on one side, and then make it a little skinnier on the other side. So it's a little bit like diagonal, like me, <laughs> right? So that that's essentially the pattern. I'm gonna make a pattern for you. Right. It's beautiful. That's nice. <laughs> so let's cut this sucker out. Um, so just cut it out, and I'm gonna cut it kind of straight on one side. make it bulbous on the other side so in a way you have to like envision it in your mind what it's supposed to look like so that you're not constantly feeling like you have to sit here and and um, cut these patterns out but this is the pattern let me see your finger so when you create it you're going to have it and it's going to wrap around here. And then you'll take this piece and then you'll just kind of like angle it over and you can just kind of flare this part up just a smidge. But typically it, they are longer, Yeah. Right? Typically. Maybe yeah, a little, longer. a little bit longer. Even now yeah. for this piece, okay. So, so one of the things, well, so with this one for the index finger, I'd be careful with making it too long because it's yeah. into the thumb, yeah. right? So you have to be, so let's say it was in this one. And yeah, your distal palmar crease is um, not long enough here. Like it come down just a smidge more, probably like, so instead of being two and a half, two and a quarter long it'd be two and a half inches long because it'd be a little bit longer so um but we were we're doing it for the index finger yeah. so we want to make sure and then remember when you fit it you could actually fit it so it's a, just a smidge lower right a smidge lower which just means you'd have to take into consideration um the the in-between part so you might trim this just a smidge higher up here and then you might trim just a smidge lower up here right and then one of the things that i like to do when i make it is i will stretch it just a smidge here so it fits right so it fits so it touches a little stretch never hurts anybody and then here I, I have to pull this index finger back so what I'll do is I'll take this tab and I'll slightly pull it and then come down like this I'll take this tab and I'll slightly pull it and when I use my when I form it I use my thumb so I pull it back um, and I block using my finger I block that MP so I can pull it into MP flexion right and then I'll use my thumb here and I'll form it into extension what did I say MP flexion oh sorry MP, MP extension, extension. <laughs> MP hyperextension actually because I want that MP to go into slight hyperextension um if I need to like she's a uh, she's an index finger so I might not pull it into hyperextension uh, but it's okay if you pull it a little bit because when you take it off remember this tab gives a little bit so if you if you have too much give then the splint's not doing anything if you give it enough give you know to pull it into hyperextension and you use your thumb to roll it over and then when I form it if you take a look at how my thumb sits right on that crease it's going to give it the flare that it needs right it's going to give it the flare that it needs because my thumb is rounded are you, would you still do so that? yeah I'd still yeah I'd still do this and then I'd pull the thumb in and then that way you have a little bit of a curvature so you can't have everything in one splint in the sense that it's got to be flat but it's got to be curved but it's got to be 
So you have to explain it to your person that it's not, it, it's going to be something that has to fit your thumb. Majority of the time, your thumb is doing something for you, if that's your dominant hand. And it's okay that there's a, um, there's, it's okay that there's a little curvature. Cause they're like, well, what if I go like this? Well, when the hell are you gonna go like this, right? Stop giving people high fives with this hand. <laughs> you might have to just pause your high fives for a little bit. But, um, but those are some tips when it comes to um, creating a trigger finger orthosis <laughs> for an index finger and all the little things that you have to think about. But I think the biggest thing that you have to think about um, is always comfort and the comfort comes from here. It comes from in between and how functional they are with it. Does it do what it's supposed to do? And is it comfortable? Those are your two main questions. What is the purpose of this orthosis? Is it doing what it's supposed to do? It's supposed to block from full, full flexion so that they stop triggering. So when you evaluate your orthosis, does it block you enough? <laughs> so when you're creating orthosis, it's a, you have to ask yourself two questions. Is it doing what it's supposed to do? And is it really comfortable for that person, right? If you're making a trigger finger orthosis, is it doing what it's supposed to do by blocking from full flexion to stop the triggering? It's got to stop the triggering. And if it's doing its job, then you did the orthosis correctly. Is it comfortable for your patient? that they're, it's so comfortable that they can wear it. Let's know that a trigger finger orthosis is something that needs to be worn at all times. When you're active, when you're not active, when you're sleeping, it needs to be worn at all times for at least a minimum of a month. And then when you see that there's no more triggering, wear it another month, believe me. I've been able to get rid of some of the most severe uh, trigger finger because they actually listened and did what they were supposed to do. If they take it off and they start sleeping without it and they start doing heavy shit without it and then they start triggering again, now you've got to go backwards and start all over again. But if you wear the orthosis the way you're supposed to be worn, which is all the time until you stop triggering and then wear it an extra month to ensure that you really have stopped triggering, right? Then, then you can get rid of it. If they can't wear this all the time, there's other strategies as well to help get rid of the trigger finger. But let me not go into that because it's all about the orthosis in this video. It's just a T, like Tran. Two ways to measure. That's one with this. Oh, yes. This is the way to measure, and the other way to measure is like this. Yeah, easy. quick and easy. So I go like this, I mark it with my finger, I go around, and then I say, okay, if this is the thickness of this finger, I have to go double the space. So that's my measuring. Yeah. So it's like, you know, when you when you try you're trying to try on jeans but you don't want to wear it and you take the jeans and you're like let me see if it goes around and it goes from one end to the bone to the other end then that means that it potentially could fit you <laughs> it's kind of like that in splint format so i go i go from pip and then i say okay how long and so i will also do this oh so i can uh, get more use of my orthosis material without wasting, I will say, hmm, if it comes all the way down here, I can go across to this finger, and then this is the amount that I need. Let me score it for you. So then this is the amount that I need. I'm going to give a little bit extra space. This is the amount of orthosis I need. Can you see the scoring in the... Yeah. There it is, right there. See the score? So that's how wide I need it, and this is how long I need it. 
and then I just envision blue and blue then I envision my T so then I say okay this is the middle and then this is my T like tran that's not how you say my last name but that's how most people say it <laughs> right that's how I measure and then I just imagine rounded corners <laughs> The hardest part to cut is in, for in between here. Because you need it rounded. You just, you need it rounded. Um, if you cut, go in and go across, you're going to end up with a square and jagged edges. And that is such a problem because it's your web space, you know, web space of your finger. So, but that's the second way I measure. It's my favorite way to measure. But I go dink, 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 and then I'm like, okay. That's how I measure. All right. So either way you do it. Oh my God, look. <laughs> either way you do it, it's good. And if you're not sure of how long, you can always cut this again. You can cut this wide because you can stretch it, right? You can cut this T part wide so you can stretch it out a little bit, right? So if it's thick on top, you can stretch it and it'll, it'll narrow itself out, right?